You know how in movies, when they used force perspective by putting a small object near the camera to make it look big? That's not what this is. The real crux of this project is going to be this part here, and you might recognize this. This is the dish that we use to make the pizza tray and the pizza clock. Let's give it a hit with some mold release. And we can set that aside. And today we're going to be using Thick Set Fathom, and we're going to be pouring a huge volume of it. I'm not sure I've ever poured this much at once. Depending on your measuring system of choice, this holds four quarts or four liters, and it is cold out here. Whenever I say that, it's California cold, so apologies to everybody living in the real cold. Um, it's like 50 degrees, and so the resin's not happy at 50 degrees. Got a little heater going here to warm things up, and these two bottles have been sitting in a hot water bath for the last 20 minutes and that helps bring them up to temperature. When I'm doing resin pours in the middle of summer out here and it's like 90 degrees, I'm miserable, but the resin's really happy. I think this mold holds like 90 ounces, and so that's what we're gonna mix up. Ooh, it's crazy. I'm gonna pour up to the line on the outside here. That comes up uh, on this first three. The hardener up to the second three. What did we hit? Three liters. We're going to add two drops of blue dye and that is simply to help the long-term yellowing of this object. I have been told that a little bit of blue or purple uh, helps counteract yellowing effect of resin. Why not try it? Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with. Luck be a lady. It's a huge volume of resin. Looks good to me. How much will it take? I think the whole thing's going in here. Whoa, that's three liters of resin. That's a lot of resin. That's over 96 ounces. It's amazing. It, it's, um, it's just gonna take some time. It's been seven days since I poured this. Let's see, let's see if we can get it out of here. <laughs> okay. Wow. It looks pretty good but um, it's not gonna magnify anything. But man, that's through 100 ounces of resin, and that looks pretty good. Let's do pounds. Yeah. Over six pounds, that's six pounds of resin. Some of you might think I'm stalling. You people would be right. I am super nervous about the next step. I like the center. The only thing I need to do is shape the outside edge, right? Does that make sense? Have I ever put six pounds of resin on this lathe before? It looks like some weird sci-fi instrument. Yes, we've checked the reflector, and it doesn't seem to be the problem, but we're still not getting good communication through the portal. Well, check it again! And we're going to put you over here, in case this whole thing flies off the lathe, we'll get a good view of it. Okay. 
So that's dead center, and that is like an eighth in either direction. So there's our target. That's how much material I want to remove. anything we can do with these shavings and the truth is I'm not positive that there is but I'm going to keep this pile because this one's pretty substantial and uh, maybe we can come up with some way to reuse it there we'll keep that much of it I think sanding is going to be a long process today I'm going to start with 120 I'm going to go all the way through to 800 on both sides was 240, which is the last sprint we're going to do with the power sander. Now we're going to switch over to wet sanding. I do not expect it to ever be as optically clear as glass, um, but I'm going to try my best to make it look good. Micro mesh pads are what I use for polishing. They are their own grit system. It consists of nine pads, starting at 1500 and going through 12,000. Some of you might have watched that and thought, well, that all looks well and good, but what about that little bit in the middle? That little bit in the middle was nice and polished, but it didn't have a smooth transition. 220 grit, and I'm just going through to 800, and we're just going to do it by hand. And I also have these larger micro mesh pads. If my shoulder hurts tomorrow, somebody remind me why. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. On this video, I think I could have about two hours of sanding footage, which is a lot of time in your own head. And while I'm doing this important yet rather menial task, I tend to listen to Audible. I've been an Audible member for years, and as an Audible member, I get one title a month to keep from their catalog. But that doesn't mean you're going to run out of things to listen to, because there is a huge selection of titles on their catalog. As a member, you can download or stream their included titles all you want. Let me show you what I've been listening to. I mean, there's a huge selection of included audiobooks, but also originals and podcasts. And as you can see, I tend to favor fantasy pretty heavily, but I've also been branching out and trying a lot of classic literature. And last night, we all sat around and listened to Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, narrated by Hugh Grant. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Simply visit audible.com slash Peter Brown or text Peter Brown to 500 500. So the last time I made one of these years ago, this is the point I stopped at. It was just the lens and I held it. But I've been thinking it would be really cool if this one had a handle. And so I had like this ginormous magnifying. I uh, kind of wish I thought of this ahead of time because now I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm supposed to hold it. A piece of steel and made a hoop out of it like this. So like this was smaller so that when this part and this part were squeezed together it would hold the whole thing. So I've got these strips of steel which are three feet in length and uh, it's just just a little too small to make that hoop 
so um, I'll just weld two of them together. If you have um, light sensitivity, then go ahead and just jump forward. This will only take a little bit. Okay. Oh wow, this should be equal. I, if I scratch this thing with I talking instead of doing, I'm going to be super angry with me. Work. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I could weld these together, but I want to make it, but then I wouldn't be able to take it apart if I ever want. I can hold it one-handed now. It doesn't feel like it's going to slip. And we are pretty much the capacity of this lathe which is 24 inches. some chip out here. That's okay. We'll just put a little CA glue in there. Stuff it full of shavings. So the wood's spinning this direction. So if I put my hand if I put my hand over here, I'm going to hurt it. <laughs> but if I put it underneath, then it'll just hit the palm of my hand. I don't know that I recommend anybody actually do this, but uh, I'm trying my best to be safe about it. Now we just need to figure out how to fit this sucker to our lens. A project without a plan. Perfect. I need to go down 18 inches and I've managed to bore about 4 inches. Um, this isn't working. Uh, it is time for a trip to the hardware store.
to look darker. So this is redwood. This is exactly what I'm going for. This overly dark wood. Stain is not a finish. So I will just put on a little wipe on polyurethane. That is exactly what I'm looking for. I was curious to see what the total weight was after completion. Looks like just six pounds. So all of that stuff that was removed weighs the same as the metal hoop and the redwood handle. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Here. I'm sorry. Let me check that out. There are definitely some imperfections in the lens. There's some ripples on one side. Um, I, I, can, I can just barely feel but at this size, they definitely, they definitely uh, alter the image. Oh, look at that, that looks pretty cool. I would have loved for it to be optically clear, but since it's not, it kind of looks like an old style glass. So why did I make a giant magnifying lens? I don't know, I just wanted one. <laughs> look, there's an ax handle made out of gummy bears behind me. All things considered, the clarity is pretty good, and I don't see any yellow in it at all, especially considering the volume of resin that we poured. You would think there'd be some yellow tint to it, but maybe that blue dye really makes a difference. I'll definitely do that from now on. I've got a 15 inch resin magnifying lens, a metal hoop, and a two foot long redwood handle. It's as good as I'd hoped for. If you don't wanna miss my videos in the future, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. All right, well, we'll, we'll continue calibrating. Maybe we have to reverse the polarity to make it work the way we want. <laughs>